Good afternoon, everyone. So thank you very much for the organization for inviting me. It's a very great pleasure to be here and discuss such an interesting topic. And also, I've heard there is a very important rugby uh, game going on just now. So I also <laughs> thank you all, each of you for being here, uh, especially coming from a country from Brazil, where sports is so important for us, in our case, soccer games. So I can understand <laughs> the feeling now. And I, even if you're also watching the, the game at the same time, for me, it's fine. I'm very happy that you're, <laughs> you are all here. Uh, as uh, Claire mentioned, now we get to the details of the appointments and challenges of arbitrators and uh, which are the factors that lead to one thing or the, the other one. And uh, uh, especially consider the confidentiality surrounding arbitrations, not only which are the factors which are important when taking these decisions, but how do we find the information relating to each of, of those aspects. So I will focus on appointment and uh, some other people in the panel will focus more on the challenging uh, issues. I believe I needed to explain the importance of uh, this <coughs> subject. Uh, thinking about uh, each of you, uh, of your experience, even for the ones of you who haven't participated in an actual procedure, uh, I understand that most of you have participated in multi arbitrations. So even in multi arbitrations, you can see the difference between an arbitrator who gets to the room and only asks questions which clearly shows that they don't know the details of the case. And this is only a very simple uh, example, but which you can compare that when you think in, about a real case, an important arbitration that you are handling, the difference of having arbitrators with uh, different uh, characteristics, and how do, do, do you get uh, to that? An important uh, difference between uh, uh, moot court arbitration and real arbitration is you have the voice to choose your arbitrator. So this is one of the most important facts that when you are counseling for an arbitration and you really have to find the necessary information in order to be able to present the most uh, fit uh, arbitrator for um, your case. So in view of that, which are the topics that we are going to discuss now? First, how are arbitrators selected? Which are the factors that we have to take into account when um, discussing this? And second, how to find information about uh, potential arbitrators. And uh, some of these issues have already been covered in previous, uh, in previous panels, but not uh, considering the details that we are going to, to, to present uh, here. So the first issue, how are arbitrators selected? And here I will just quickly pass through some of the most important issues that we have to take uh, into consideration. So the first thing, we have tangible aspects. Uh, training, school, legal system, uh, nationality of the arbitrators. These are issues that are really easy to see and really, really easy to find. You can see that in the CV of the arbitrator. You can see that on LinkedIn, on the website of the arbitrator. So these are really easy things to find, but they're really important to the case. The second one, experience. <coughs> experience in arbitration as lawyer and as an arbitrator. And we have had some uh, panels here discussing the role, the two hats, and the importance of that. The rules applicable to the arbitration, the law governing the substantive dispute. Sometimes, depending on the characteristics of the arbitrator, there are some technical aspects that are very, very important. Do this person that you're thinking about appointing as arbitrator knows have experience over those matters? And particularly in some case, the sector in which the disputes uh, deals with is very important too. So does this arbitrator have experience in this specific sector? These information, the ones on experience, are not that easy to find because maybe in the website of the arbitrator they will say, okay, I have experience in this field, in this, in this, in this, but it's different reading that in the website. And another thing is having participated in an arbitration with this person and knowing how this person, seeing how the person really dominates such issues. So the information that you have from practice is really, really, really important. Third thing, which is really important, is the position of the arbitrator considering the issues that are discussed in this specific arbitration that you are handling. So did this arbitrator provide, uh, publish some articles or legal opinions regarding in favor of a certain position related to the fact you're discussing arbitration? Or has this person represent a party who was in a similar position or from the same sector or against it. 
So all those things also, you want to find that you, you can Google it, you can look for this information, but it's not the information that it's uh, as easily available. Then we go to the intangible aspects, which are also very important. So the first one is availability. And uh, you might say, of course, this is obvious, of course, availability is important, you need an administrator to have time to, to work on a case. Uh, the thing is, uh, in many circumstances, the person will just think, okay, I already have 50 administrators or 50 uh, patients in my number, I'm fine with that. I don't think uh, I have too many. So it's the, the control of that is something very complicated. And ICC noticed that. So the first thing that ICC did regarding this issue was ICC decided to ask uh, the traders, the appointed traders, to inform in how many cases they were involved when they were appointed, so that the buyers would take this information into consideration in order to decide to challenge him or not. This was the first thing, and ICC thought, okay, maybe this is enough to solve this problem, but it wasn't because you can control the information that the arbitrator provides in this form. So the second more recent thing that ICC did was, ICC is now publishing the composition of the arbitral tribunals that participate in ICC educations. Of course, it's not all arbitrations, it's not all ICC, but it's a very important chamber. Uh, so having this information available to the market is a very important thing. And as it happened with other ICC initiatives, many other chambers are doing the same, even in Brazil, the most important chambers already started to do that too. So you can also research the websites of these chambers to find out in how many cases this uh, potential arbitrator is already involved. And so you have a, a bit more information about this person's uh, availability. Then, uh, also related to availability, you have the practical, the practical experience of knowing, okay, in the things that I'm handling with this arbitrator, how long does this arbitrator take to react to each submission of the parties? Because some of the submissions are already very clear established in the procedural order, and so you really know what's the next step. But what, if in the case, what happens in the cases that this is not so clearly established? How long does this arbitrator take to to decide on each of these things. And we were just discussing with uh, Anna outside about another case that I met. He was saying, you know, this arbitrator took 30 months to, to do the next, next step in an arbitration. So sometimes it's really complicated and you have to have uh, this information in order to decide who to, to appoint. Uh, same thing regarding the award. Sometimes an arbitrator takes too long to issue an award in which in a case which wouldn't shouldn't take that long just because the person is just overcrowded. So this is really a very, very important aspect. One of the factors, for example, for arbitration in the Zoom case. In Brazil, if you take a case to a court, it will take a process, it will take 20 years or more. So you want that case in arbitration to go fast. And uh, this, this question of time is very important. Uh, then we have the question of the behavior. So how does the, this arbitrator, this potential arbitrator behaves in the arbitral tribunal during hearings? Which kind of questions this person presents uh, in the, during the hearings? How does he behave when he's acting as a chairman and, and as a core arbitrator? All this information is very important. And what about the relationship with other arbitrators already appointed in this group, or even if you are appointed at the same time, if you think of the characteristics of the dispute, who are the persons, the persons who might be appointed for this case? And if you consider this many ten people, what's the relationship between them? So how uh, these are also very important factors regarding the social network of arbitration that we have been discussing that you have to take into account when appointing someone. Interim leave, document reproduction. What are what are the, the uh, behavior of this arbitrator regarding these issues, especially when you think Parties coming from different legal traditions, civil law, common law, what's the usual behavior of this arbitrator? Uh, how focused and careful about the details of the case is this arbitrator and sign some of these, these issues? Because there is also a behavior of an arbitrator who has been so long uh, working on these cases, and uh, thanks God this is not a general issue, but it happens that some arbitrators, oh, I already know everything about this. And that you see that the person did not take uh, all the, the 
focus on the details of the case and as it was uh, necessary. And finally, the reasoning of the awards, because in the end, what we all need to enforce the award, so the reasoning and the details of the award also have to be very uh, well done. Then, once you have all of this information, you have to think on uh, how to balance these factors. And this is really depends on the, the details of, uh, of uh, your case. Uh, how, what is more important depending on the cases of the case that they are handling. And some cases are so specific, for example, we have had a few cases in Brazil talking about sports again. Uh, we have had a few cases involve uh, soccer teams. And uh, in this case, besides all this information, we have to think, maybe this is a case of cheers for this team. So I don't want him in panel. I don't want any of this passion involved in my decision. So it's really hard to go into the table of the case to make a very good decision on how to figure the table of the case. So once you have all this information, uh, once you have all the factors that you should take into account, you we are now thinking, okay, I'm starting this case, this international arbitration, and I have here the idea of which kind of, uh, of profile for an arbitrator that I want, all the characteristics that I need, uh, and so, how do you look for the information to answer all uh, of, this, of these questions? It depends on the source that you have. And then here we really go to the question of the social network of organization. The first resource uh, is the law firm. So, uh, in our case, for example, uh, we are the law firm with the biggest uh, team in arbitration, the biggest case law we are handling now. Uh, 70 arbitrator arbitrations. So we have hundreds of awards to look at in our database. And uh, for example, if I'm starting a case and the profile that I want, I don't know any person who would be fit for the position. <coughs> what I would do, I would discuss with my partners, I would discuss with my teams. And inside the law firm, we already have so many information uh, that we, we can use in order to take this decision. And apart from being uh, uh, working as counsels, we also have the, the position of the people in our team as arbitrators, which is even better because you know not only how these persons work when you're acting as counsel, <coughs> person is an arbitrator, but you have someone in the firm who has already sat with this person in arbitration and knows how this person behaves within the arbitral tribunal. So, of course, if you're working in a big firm who has access to all of this information, it makes it much more easy for you to, to have access to all these questions. Uh, but what if it's not the case? What if you're working in a case in a, in a firm which does not have, a, or you are a recent uh, person who has just started working with arbitration and you don't have this information in the firm? Then again, you go to the arbitral network. And of course, it also happens with us because. Thanks God that there is diversity, we're looking for it, we want to have more people working with arbitration, we don't want to have only the same cases as always. And sometimes, even in the law firm, we don't have the information about the people uh, who, who is the possible uh, arbitrators of the case. So what do you do? You take the telephone and you call your friends, you call your peers, you call the people you know who might be involved in arbitration with this person, and you say, have you had this arbitration in a case? Or have you had this person sitting with you in an arbitral tribunal? And then you go through all the details of the case and not look for the answers to the questions that uh, you were looking for. But in the end, do you get accurate information about that? That also depends on the social, uh, on the relationship that you have built uh, in the, within the arbitral network. So depending on whether the person knows you, the person trusts you, or whether you are also open to provide information when the person needs, do you have more accurate information about this potential arbitrator? So the social aspects of uh, the arbitration network is really, really important in this. Once you have all the important information, you can also use the, the resource of interviewing the arbitrator which is more common in uh, some countries, in all kinds of others. In Brazil, this is not a very common uh, practice, but it also happens. And in the end, what happens with the persons who do not have information in the law firms and haven't, grow, uh, haven't built a network to obtain the information? 
the other progress is concerned and look to have uh, more transparency uh, regarding information and operations, uh, some initiatives have been raised. I don't know which of you has heard or has information about arbitrator intelligence, that's everyone. Some of you, yeah, many of you have heard of it. So for the ones who doesn't know it, what is it? It's an initiative created by Professor Kathleen Rogers. And the idea is all of these questions that we have uh, been discussing here, that everybody has the same questions. And how would that happen? Uh, they created a questionnaire that people would answer after they finish uh, an arbitration procedure. And in this questionnaire, all these questions that I have asked you now, they have these questions about each arbitrator. So, what did they, how did the arbitration sign? How did he deal with uh, production of documents? Uh, how fast was he? How long did he take to issue an award? How did he behave? Did he present proper questions during the hearings? And so <coughs> it's a very detailed questionnaire in order to find uh, this, uh, to give access to people to those information. And so people would be encouraged to answer this questionnaire. And after uh, arbitrator intelligence got all the necessary information regarding one arbitrator, they would start to provide to people. Uh, it's not still very, it's not uh, defined how it would happen because these people would have to buy the questionnaires or the forms. Um, and then you would have, for example, discounts if you're providing information to you, would maybe receive something free in order to encourage the use of uh, the, the questionnaires. But the idea is to promote the, the transparency and the fairness and, and uh, diversity in international arbitration. The big question that comes with that is, will the arbitral community provide this information? Will everyone feel encouraged to answer these questionnaires? If that happens, for sure, this will change a very important aspect of the social network arbitration. This will create increase a lot of transparency in arbitration. So this is a question that I leave to you for, for our discussion today, uh, for, uh, for us to think about it, okay? Thank you very much.